As I'm sure a lot of you know, right now there is a new blaster called the Dart Zone Pro Mark II. This is a phenomenal, just a little pistol type blaster like this that is you know very sought after and hard to get frankly right now so i've missed about two or three opportunities to get one and i just can't seem to get one that aside they are also very expensive i think they're like 90 bucks or something so it kind of made me just kind of take all that negative energy and put it towards something good which is the knockout now i know this blaster has been around for a while but this thing is phenomenal i, I had no idea how amazing this little pistol was just the sheer power at the price point is just unbeatable. Now, the things that you can do with this, like add an inline clip for, you know, more inline capacity, or I think there's a rocket launcher. I saw in Thingiverse, we can actually put a rocket launcher on this thing. There is a stock attachment. There is just so much going on for this platform. It is really amazing. So this particular knockout, I have installed a brass breech kit from France Foamworks and a link in the description, but this is a really cool kit minus the barrel. The barrel is something I found off Thingiverse and printed. We'll talk about that more later, but yeah, very happy with this blaster. Performance is amazing. And uh, let's go ahead and take a closer look as to how I installed this kit and check out its accuracy and how, how hard it hits. So let's jump right into the video. So ever since the Nerf Rival Naka entered the Nerf hobby, this thing has just been phenomenal. I mean, there's a lot of kits and upgrades for this thing. And part of that is because this thing shoots Rival and when converted to shoot Half Dart, it really packs a punch. A lot of it is because of the plunger tube assembly in here is just massive to shoot the Rival rounds. And it has this beautiful feature, which allows for brass breaching. And what that does is you have an inner brass and an outer brass. So you're able to secure the chamber to create a nice tight seal and then push all that plunger tube power behind it and just really propel your darts. So this blaster right here, I was able to get up to 165 FPS and uh, that's really cool for a sidearm. Now, as you can see, I am shooting the standard Adventure Force short dart, which is a great ammo type and I highly recommend it. And this thing is just packing a punch. I actually don't even want to shoot it in here. <laughs> I put a hole in something. Whew. My trap is uh, really getting beat up. So let's go ahead and go over the blaster real quick. I am going to show some footage of how I installed this brass breech kit. And once again, this is from France Foamworks. And uh, this kit is uh, pretty affordable. Very good craftsmanship here. You can see that the brass is very nicely cut and smooth and deburred and flared and it is just really good work. So super impressed with that. Full disclaimer, I believe I put my outer diameter 3D printed part in backwards. <laughs> I'm not sure, correct me if I'm wrong. And I only say that because I had to do a lot of trimming. I had to basically saw off some material and sand it down and do a lot of form fitting because as you're doing this mod, what you really want to happen is when it's all put together, you hit that switch and it should just eject like without any problem, you know, you should have a nice smooth ejection. And what happens is if your material, if you're kind of off at all, it won't catch for one. So this, this little thing back here won't catch. So you have to be really careful on that. And then if you're also, you have to take into account the seal because there's a little back seal back there. This, uh, there's a lot of tinkering with this one, but I, I got it to work really well and I'm very happy with it. Yeah, so let's go ahead and jump into that footage for that install and see how you can do one of these. So this knockout has been uh, kind of kicking around my shop for a couple months now. And uh, as you can see, I started doing some stuff with it. Um, actually got most of it actually modded for the brass breech kit. Uh, this thing, I was getting it to hit up to 143 FPS. I think that was the highest one I saw, or 145, so pretty good. Uh, today, I'm looking to give this thing a paint job and essentially I have to epoxy some of these components in because as you can see, uh, some of it is sliding. Oop. So like this, this barrel material on there is just kind of floating in there. And then uh, occasionally the brass, I can even pull the brass out. So I want to lock this in place back there and kind of lock this piece right here in place. Let me grab this little green dot off here. It's a little cheap green dot that I got at Walmart for like $15 from Gamo. It's pretty cool. I want to get more of these little red dots just to kind of throw on blasters. I think it's actually an airsoft 
red dot. Uh, these little dart holders I've already glued in place, so they're not going anywhere. And uh, I will be doing a list of all these 3D printed parts uh, that I did was able to get a hold of. I'll put that links in the description. Uh, some of this is the actual brass breech kit that France Foam offers. I was a little bit torn on this right here. I didn't like it at first because I, I really am a big fan of how this feels. But after installing it, I think it looks really cool because it just looks like a mag, which really has a really cool look to it, especially with this real big chunky pistol grip. Now, as far as comfort, I still think this thing is a little bit more comfortable because, you know, it doesn't have these crisp edges, but as far as how it looks, I think that looks way better. So right now, uh, let's go ahead and uh, just kind of open this thing up. I'm going to talk about some of the stuff inside as to, you know, how to do this mod. There's a lot of videos out there. So, I mean, there's a lot of stuff you can see on how to do this. It's not that hard of a mod, especially if you're doing the kit that you drop in. But uh, let's go ahead and open this up. So as you can see here, these are all the key internals that you should keep when working on one of these. I did do something a little different. I actually cut the back end of this, uh, this lock. I kind of disabled it and I really just use it as a filler piece. Some people will probably not like this because the switch does have a tendency to kind of kind of move back and forth and might be a little noisy. Uh, you can also glue that in place. I just didn't like the hole because if you remove it, there's just a hole but down there. Some other pieces are this piece you don't need. These are all pieces of the lock, that either. And there is a little tiny thing at the bottom down here. It's a little peg with a spring that it looks like I have managed. Oh, there we go. Uh, with the little spring that goes on there. So you don't need any of this. And of course, this is the air restrictor and that is inside of this area. I've already inserted my, I have an insert in here to help with the, the kit. And that insert, I believe I've already glued in place. So, so that one's attached. That, that is what holds this brass. And it basically looks like that. They just kind of slide in. Essentially what you do is, uh, this is all basically just all one unit, but I am replacing the pole with this piece. And I think I'm actually gonna continue tearing this down a little bit more because, oh yeah, so that's critical. I'm gonna get rid of these pieces because we don't need them, they don't confuse me. But I'm gonna continue tearing this down and uh, get to the base components so I can go paint it. All right, just got this stuff painted. Let's go ahead and put it back together. All right, we're at a point where I can kind of talk about the brass breech kit. Now this uh, kit comes with two pieces of brass, a 3D printed part, which I've already inset one of the pieces of brass in there. That is the outer diameter that goes in the 3D printed part. The inner diameter brass goes in right about here. So I'm actually gonna mix up some two-part epoxy to set that in there. 
Now, word of caution, before doing that, make sure everything form fits perfectly. I actually had to put this thing all together and I found that this 3D printed part was not really allowing the tolerance I needed for this thing to completely close right here. So when it was fully closed, as you can see right here, and it's still, this still might need a little bit more, but essentially this lock right here, which it looks like it's not engaging. The point is I had to take material off here so that we can get up closer to there so that this lock engages. That way when you hit the switch, this return spring will pull it open. And of course this will also need to be epoxied into that chamber right there. The other part of it is this barrel or this uh, barrel shroud thing I have up here, it was not compatible with the stock part because it was hitting this little nubbin that sticks out. There's a little piece that sticks out here like that. So I just sawed that off, that way it can be flush. So let's put this back together. So after getting this all installed, like I said, this thing was hitting really hard. I'm going to go ahead and show some chronograph readings and uh, you can see for yourself, this thing really packs a punch. In fact, I don't think I got a number that was below 150, which is really crazy. It was pretty consistently hitting around 160 actually. I also decided to take this outside and get some range and kind of to play around with some accuracy. I put a target up at 40 feet and did a little stack of cups and uh, it did take me about all of these, so eight shots to hit those cups. But all things considered, hitting a target at 40 feet the size of a cup with a Nerf blaster is pretty impressive if you ask me. And I didn't stop there. I also wanted to see just how far I could get this thing to shoot. So we actually did some arced shots and they really went pretty far. So let me put some footage for that. And let's see, we got the knockout modded with the brass breech is hitting 154. 155. So on this blaster, we have a few things going on that are worth mentioning. Uh, obviously I talked about the brass breech kit. Uh, secondly, this muzzle up here. So this is a free brass breech type of kit that you can print off if you have a 3D printer. I just took the barrel out of that because the kit that France Farm Works provided didn't have one. So I, I but I really wanted one because I, I don't like the idea of the brass kind of sticking out. You can accidentally core someone or, yeah, it's just a little dangerous. So having this on the end just kind of prevents all that. Not to mention, you also can paint it up and have it a little bit more safe looking. The next thing to talk about is uh, these dart holders, which I believe is from Boomstick Mods. I'll go ahead and post a link on that. That's on Thingiverse as well. And I was a little torn and I think I'm gonna make another one of these and do the minimization kit because when you add these, it's a little bit harder to holster. So I would like to do one where they pretty much remove this material and there's like some inserts that just fill it out, which I think would look really nice. And then of course, combine that with an inline, an inline clip, but that's for a different video. But I do like these. This is kind of a quick and easy feature for you to kind of get rid of the old rival ball holder and throw in dart holders, which holds eight darts, which is really cool. So you can put one in there. So four on each side, that's nine darts. So you can have right here on your blaster. And one of the last things I threw on here was the Gamo Airsoft Green Dot. This is a cheap green dot. If you would like to grab one of these, I've actually set up an affiliate link with Amazon. And if you purchase it through that link, I'll get a few cents. So that's cool. And I also put a link for the knockout. So overall, if you do not have one of these modded out, I highly recommend it. If you've never done blaster modifications ever, uh, this actually isn't too bad to start with. 
Uh, obviously, you're going to need a few tools for some cutting and grinding, depending on when you're doing the form fitting. But uh, there's a lot of different guides out there and some good, good uh, creators that will, you know, 3D print the parts for you. And uh, you can even get the brass breech kit. So as a first mod, I don't think this is that bad. And let's talk about the price. I mean, right now, I think these knockouts are like $5.99, which is crazy. So you can get a $5.99 blaster, which is good by itself, mind you. You can grab uh, cheap optics, which I think these are like 15 bucks. I think they're 12 or something. And if you have access to a 3D printer, you can print them out. You know, so we'll say filaments, like, you know, 20 bucks. But if you don't, you can buy a kit, which are still around 25, so it's not horrible. So after it's all said and done, you can have a really nice blaster for under 50 bucks or so. And, uh, you know, when looking at the current competition out there with, you know, we have our new Dart Zone Pro Mark II that just released. Uh, this isn't this isn't that bad, you know, when all things considered, considering that kit is like $80, $90. Yes, that kit comes with a lot of stuff, but if you don't have that kind of money, maybe consider this. So in the end, highly recommend it. I recommend it so much that if you can get a hold of a few of these, I probably would grab, you know, multiple knockouts. So what I want to do is kind of build a bunch of these out, maybe four, at least four, have them lined up in a blaster rack for, you know, people who have never been exposed to modified blasters. But here, try this. Let's go have a little battle, a little skirmish for people, for friends. And I think these are a great way to start. I also believe this complements a loadout of like a, a, maybe a large flywheeler or something like, for me personally, my hummingbird, I'd like to run this as a sidearm. So I think it complements a lot of things. And uh, just how far the range is on this and how accurate it is, I mean, it almost could just be a primary if you really wanted to just run this. And in the end, I highly recommend this. So go get one. Well, I'm Dr. Flux, and that pretty much wraps up this review or build log let me know in the comment section if you would like to do one of these, if you've already done one before, and any comments about this video. Just let me know what you think. I wanna thank you for watching this video. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe. And as always, happy foam flinging.